Hmm. Yeah, feather. That should do it. Okay. One, two, three. Hmm. Not so much. Yeah, should do it. One, two, three. Yep, that did it. Today we're talking about structure and function. The basic idea that the shape and stability of an object is related to its function, its intended purpose. Let's take the hammer, for example, one of the earliest tools that humans designed. Sure, it has evolved a lot since the early days, but the concept is still the same. The handle serves as an extension of your arm, allowing you to generate a greater arc of a swing, which produces greater force with less effort. The head of it is very heavy, which helps amplify or increase the force of your swing. And the nose is flat perfect for striking the head of a nail. We see this idea of intended purpose in nature too. For example, while this feather might not be so good for hammering a nail, it's exactly what helps owls become one of nature's deadliest hunters. Well, if you're a mouse. What? Most birds have feathers that form a straight edge to help them produce lift and fly more efficiently. The air coming off of that edge is what produces the whooshing sound when birds flap their wings. But owls have fluffy little feathers along the edge of their wings, almost like fringe. Those fluffy feathers absorb that whooshing sound, allowing them to fly almost silently. Form follows function. The shape or design of an object is determined by the job, task, or role that object has. So remember, Use the right tool for the job. And to make sure it's the right tool, consider how it's shaped and what it's made up of. Understanding structure and function helps us explain why something works the way it does. Knowing that allows us humans to improve our designs so we can create more successful tools, objects, and machinery. At the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power, they have lots of structures doing lots of functions that you might expect, like big pipes that carry water and high tension towers that support electric cables. But what about this? Yep, it's a ball. You might remember seeing that viral video of these shade balls being rolled into the Los Angeles Reservoir, but do you know why? I mean, why does water need shade? If you guess that it's to help prevent evaporation, you're partially correct. The coverage they provide can prevent up to 90% of evaporation, which is a big deal, especially during a drought. But these balls were not put there just to reduce evaporation. The primary reason is to prevent deadly chemicals from forming. <gasps> Seriously. You see, when sunlight interacts with bromide, an element that's naturally present in groundwater and surface water, and the chlorine used to kill bacteria, they create bromate, which is a carcinogen. That means it's a substance that can cause cancer. Nobody wants that in their drinking water. So drinking water reservoirs have to be covered. Most of those covers are solid, but the Los Angeles Reservoir is 71 acres. Building a solid cover for that would cost a lot of money. These cost less than 50 cents. Now there are 96 million of these on the LA Reservoir, so that's still a lot of money, but a lot less than the cost of building a 71 acre solid cover. Interestingly, these floating balls weren't designed to shade water. Their original purpose was to keep birds out of the water near airports or industrial sites. And it wasn't one of LADWP's engineers who came up with the plan. It was one of their biologists who first got the idea of using these to solve the problem of covering such an expansive area. Which goes to show you that sometimes a single form can have many functions. It also goes to show you that good ideas can come from anywhere. So if you've got vision and creative ingenuity, maybe you should join the team at the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power and share your good ideas. Find out more at ladwp.com forward slash careers.